Prepare to be swept away by a new musical that's testing its sea legs right now in the nation's capital. Thanks so much for joining us and Happy New Year. I'm Tamsin Fidel. The new musical Swept Away is inspired by the songs of the Avid Brothers, and it's on stage right now at Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. This compelling new musical about a real-life shipwreck is playing right here at Arena Stage. I sat down with the cast and creative team to find out more. Just gut reactions. You just sat through the show again. What is it like for you? I mean, it's different for you watching it than for me. It's so humbling to see this many people gathering around these songs that were made without this intention. You know, there was no aspiration. It was made from a place of, of blind, <laughs> blind love. And uh, then to see all these people working so hard around these songs and around this story that was, uh, and building the story around these songs, it's, uh, it's very humbling. I realized 20 years, actually, the anniversary is coming up of, of this album that inspired uh, this musical. Can you remember sort of like what about this story resonated? I mean, absolutely. Seth and I come from a, a, <laughs> a long line of adventure stories, at sea, disaster stories. Our father, he passed down a love for, yeah. for this type of nonfiction. He, yeah, he, he imprinted a, a bit of horror and a bit of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, like, uh, I think for him, it comes from a place of uh, interest in heroism uh -huh. and survival. Yep. So he has passed on a lot of war stories and a lot of, you know, lost at sea stories, shark stories, all these like just just horrendous experiences <laughs> for people that came through through them. But uh, there was a book called The Custom of the of the Sea, and it was the story. And for us, we were driving around to places that were uh, seemed unknown uh, in a van. We seemed to have nothing but this belief that we were doing something that was true like you know like young people young people do to go and, and be as as true as they can and they mean that and that's a good thing but we were in that living it and it was easy to see that 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 van as our vessel and while we we're making records uh, in that time, that record in particular, it was easy just to sort of see that concept as, as a part of our story. We took ourselves quite seriously, you know? Uh, we, I, I think that it all just seems so pressing and, and, and like just such a, a, a great living analogy. Like we, we were in our little lifeboat, separated, you know? Like we, we were seeing our, our peers succeed and we were seeing ourselves, sort of extricating ourselves from uh, the common template, you know, and, and the, the, the common sort of tunnel of experience. And it was scary. And, and we, we felt very driven to survive. Well, you, you send my life a whirling, darling, when you're twirling on. Oh. I feel like you may be like secreted, if that's still a term, this mm -hmm. show, because you're a super fan of the Avett Brothers. You said backstage at American Idiot, you literally had their posters. You were attracted to their music, and did you, but did you ever imagine that you would now be in a position like this? I no. mean, did you see a, a theater piece out of it, or? Never. Did... They write this really potent, high stakes music. Like, I knew that thematically it was super duper rich, but I had never thought, oh, somebody really needs to make a musical out of those songs. It, it, it just hadn't quite crossed my mind. It's very surreal because I just have so much respect and admiration for them as artists. And it's, uh, I don't take it for granted. You know, when I walk out on stage every night, it's, it's a privilege to get to live inside their songs for a night and to, to, to sing these songs and to expand on the themes that they've put into their lyrics. It's, it's something I absolutely treasure. Forever I will move like the world that turns beneath me and when I lose my direction I'll look up to the sky when the black dress strikes upon the ground I'll be ready to surrender and remember we're all in this together. Stark 
Is it safe to assume you didn't go into this knowing much about this famous thing that happened at sea in 1884, which is the jump off True. for this show? My exposure was to, to the Avery Brothers was through John, that poster in his dressing uh -huh. room. <laughs> I saw the poster and I said, well, who's that? And he said, oh, let me show you. And he put it on the record and we listened to it and I was like, oh, this is cool. And he got me into the band. And that was in 2010. Yeah. And then I heard about the musical when it was in its development, early, early development. And then I was invited to join one of the workshops in 2019. And then I've been on board ever since. Uh, but I did go and read all the books about shipwrecks and survival and stuff so that I can place myself in that world. Yeah. And it's, yeah, there's a lot of them. It is four guys who are stuck in a boat together. Right. That's a very tense setup. Yeah. Very theatrical setup. Was that immediately exciting to you? Is that sort of the tension of that? It was intriguing and daunting mm. because, look, you know, like Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat is sure. one of my favorites. And, but a lot of people fall to that movie because it is so theatrical, mm -hmm. because the conceit of being trapped on a boat, how do you do that? And figuring that out. I knew it was going to be a challenge, and one that I ended up really taking on and having a great time with uh, the design team to figure out how to do it. It's like a, a musical as a Nathaniel Hawthorne or Herman Melville short story. Inside this very tightly constructed 90-minute musical are two distinct acts with a prelude and a coda. So it's quite complicated, but there was a before and after. And so figuring out how to negotiate and create the before and the after of it was really, really fun. So what was your reaction when you first got your hands on this script and, and these roles? <laughs> I mean, this is a very unusual story for, for yeah. a musical. When I first read the script, my jaw was on the floor by the end when I was like, it went there. Holy crow. You like, yeah, yeah. I can't, I'm, it was it's not you what you're anything. expecting. I'm not, All I'm right, not. Good. I'm just saying you gotta it watch takes some each other. Yeah. It takes big swings. Yeah. Oh, it, it goes, does. It goes yeah. in unexpected and it covers direction. so much. It's forgiveness and redemption and choices we make. And you know, it's just, a, it's just beautiful. It's, and it's all done without intermission in 90 minutes, yeah. you know, and it's amazing. So we're in 1888. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What is it like playing guys of that time and finding these characters? In 1888, it's just this men and burly and, and you get to just grow the beards out. And, and it's, it's very gruff and, and it's a hard existence because we did a lot of research on the whaling world. And these guys were out at sea at six months at a time and their wives and kids, they just left them. But you know, I, you wonder why they did it outside of just the adventure and maybe a place to be structured. It was like the Wild West on a little boat. Mignonette, that case um, that the Ava Brothers album was based on yeah. and then was kind of the inspiration and jumping off point yeah. for this story, right. was one of the first uh, cases of maritime law. Um, maritime law until then had just kind of been, you know, what you need to do at sea, mm. you do. And if it's heinous, you don't talk about it. That case of Mignonette was the first time that sailors or people at sea that had done unsavory things were tried in court. So like, we're kind of existing at, right at the rise of yeah. that time. Yeah. Nothing short of mango, nothing gonna change my mind. I won't get a different no, nothing gonna change my mind. Uh, what do you think of musicals? I'm a, I'm a big fan of jazz. Uh -huh. And, and when I, the time I met Scott and Seth, I was studying jazz. Went back to school to study jazz guitar, jazz bass. And those songs all come from the Great American Songbook. I mean, sure. all the great, all, all the jazz songs are show tunes. As far as the Broadway and that world, I, I know nothing about that world. But the idea of having the songs released from us and given to the world in that way. You know, it's, it's extremely exciting. It feels like, you know, as we move through our lives and, you know, eventually pass on ourselves, the songs perhaps can just, can keep living in different forms, in different places. Ain't no man can save me. There ain't no man can enslave me. There ain't no man.
You have made a lot of brilliant shows, uh, very different kinds of shows. Yeah. Uh, you currently have Moulin Rouge on Broadway, big hit. You've done many different things. Yeah. How did this show come your way? And what was exciting about it for you? Well, it was, it was the strangest genesis you could imagine, which is in 2017, uh, I got an email out of the blue from a producer named Matthew Mastin, who I'd never met before, young producer. And it said essentially, do you know the Avid Brothers album Mignonette and do you think it could be a musical? That very day, I went out and I listened to the album while I was hiking. Then I put on sort of an Avid Brothers playlist and just sort of got, tried to get into the DNA of what their music was. And the very next day, I did that thing that your agent says never to do, which is I emailed back and I said, I'm in. <laughs> but uh, I have one caveat, which is the Avids have to be willing to open up their entire song catalog. And uh, thankfully they were. And it's a wonderful thing to be inspired by music. We had a little bit of that in Moulin Rouge. There were certain songs that we were very excited about. Right. And we thought, well, how does this belong in the world of Moulin Rouge? And it was the same with Swept Away. There are certain songs that just emerge as saying, that's a character singing. And my history with the Abbott Brothers was amazing because they're the most generous uh, collaborators you could ever hope for. So I reached out to them and I said, I said, I'd like to tell you what I'm doing. So I flew to North Carolina. I sat at Scott Abbott's breakfast table with Scott and Seth for the for first time I'd ever met them and said, okay, let me tell you the story. And I kind of told the whole, I acted it out. I said, this is where we do this song. This is where this happens. And they could not have been more generous. And then I said, but there's one point in the song where I need a hymn because it has to function as a hymn here and then a reprise later. So it has to serve dual functions, which is a complicated thing for, for a musical composer. And they wrote a song called Lord Lay Your Hand, which is a hymn and then is reprised. And it's, it's Dark Sands' sort of first big solo number. And it's absolutely breathtaking. If you're looking for the truth, I'm proof you'll find it there. Lord, lay your hand. And they've been nothing but willing to change lyrics, to explore different ways of, of approaching the songs, different music, different instruments. So if you're an Avid Brothers fan, you're gonna hear those songs you love in different ways. I wonder which brother is better, which one our parents love most. I sure did get in lots of trouble. They seem to let the other go. What about hearing these guys, these talented guys on stage singing your, your music? I know John Gallagher is like a super fan. He had your poster up backstage on Broadway. I mean, you know, you, you were backstage on Broadway already years ago for John <laughs> Gallagher. Uh, what is it like seeing these, these performers uh, take on this music and these roles and this story? Musical theater only exists because it does a certain thing that nothing else does. You know, it's like any art form. It's why the Elizabethan sonnet exists or why jazz exists or why, you know, bluegrass exists or abstract expressionism or anything. Like, it, it only exists because it had to, because the, no, no other thing would express it like it does, you know? So seeing these, these guys do this, it, it's, it's this once in a lifetime, once in many lifetimes possibly, uh, opportunity to see this music that you wrote and that you presented possibly thousands of times tur turned into an expression that you never thought possible you know and these four guys and the entire cast are, are, are um, remarkably equipped to do that make sure my sister knows I loved her make sure my mother knows the same Always remember there was nothing worth sharing Like the love that let us share our name I'm really excited to be a part of something that is so unique that it's got this really avid fan base for the music. The Avid Brothers fan base is really, really strong and fervent and just under the radar of like mainstream sort of pop music. And then you have the fan base of musical theater who are going to come see the musicals that they, they hear are cool. So those musical theater fans are going to be introduced to this Avid Brothers music. And those Avid Brothers fans are going to be introduced to the form of musical theater. And that intersection is really interesting and exciting to me. Yeah. And you can feel it in the room as well. 